That should go in. Hi, I'm Kristen, and this is Crafting with Kristen. Today we're going to be doing a really special project. We're going to be taking an ordinary band t-shirt and we're going to turn it into a really cool fitted bodycon dress. This is going to be the project that we're working on today. This pattern is pretty cool because it's really, really versatile. It's one of the first ones I kind of started working on in my early sewing years. There's a lot of cool things that you can do with it. It's uh, probably about a medium level difficulty. So I'm gonna recommend that we use a sewing machine and we don't do hand sewing for this project. All you're gonna need is you're gonna need some fabric that you're gonna use for the bust, some fabric you're gonna use for the straps. You can also use elastic. Something that drapes well, like this lace that I have here for the ruffle on the bottom, and a band t-shirt. You'll need an O-ring and you'll also need rivets. This step is gonna be optional, but I think that it really gives a lot of character and a lot of fun to the project. So I would recommend that if you can get the supplies for it. The cool thing about this as well is that you can really translate this pattern into a whole bunch of different possibilities. You can make it longer and give it like a fishtail bottom for a maxi dress, for an evening out. You can add like lace details and stuff like that to the busts of them. You can do cool stuff like these O-rings. Um, you can also do stuff like add a ruffle like I have on my dress here, or you can get some cool stretchy elastic like I have on this one and just sew it along the hemline. So let's make some cool clothes together. First we're going to get our supplies together and we're going to make the pattern for this particular piece. You're going to need craft scissors, uh, you're also going to need fabric scissors, things to mark with like a sharpie and a chalk or watercolor pencil. You need some measuring tools like the rulers or the yardstick that I have. You're going to need a tank top that fits you well. You're also going to need a bra. You'll also need a fitted skirt. The longer ones, like a pencil skirt, is ideal. You're gonna need some craft paper. So we're gonna roll out our craft paper and use some heavy-weighted objects to lay it flat. Next, I'm taking the bra. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a shape for the bust piece. I'm using the tank top to measure how wide I want it across. Now it's gonna be two cup patterns that are identical. So I'm measuring the space in between the length that I want for the bust and I'm marking it halfway. Now I'm gonna take the bra and I'm gonna use it to trace sort of a, almost an egg shape along both sides. You don't have to follow along the bra line exactly, you're just kind of using it as a guideline of how much space you need to cover your bust. If you have a curved ruler that a lot of pattern makers use, this is actually a fantastic tool to have a really clean, nice shape, but I was keeping this easy for you guys if you don't have a lot of supplies. Now we're taking our craft scissors, not our fabric scissors. Do not use them for cutting paper. We're gonna cut out this pattern. I gave this one some extra seam allowance just to allow for any extra mistakes if you're an advanced seamstress you don't really need to um, you don't really need to leave this much seam allowance a very small amount will do also making it plunge just a little bit lower on the bust area just because I want to show off my boobies a little writing which side is the front part of it because it's a very similar shape so it could be kind of tricky and you don't want it to look all lopsided when you sew the two pieces together. Now I'm going to work for the little waistband part underneath. I'm using the tank top again to measure the distance that I want for this piece to be. I'm going to use a ruler to pretty much just draw a straight rectangle. I think I have it about three inches on either side and then the width of the tank top across. I'm also doing something similar for these straps. I'm just taking the whole length of the ruler. Usually this is a little bit more fabric than I need, but 
When you're making the straps, it's better to make them longer than have to cut out a whole new piece of fabric and sew new straps again. I'm trying to figure out about how much space I'm gonna need for the back piece of this. So I'm using the piece I created for the bust to do so. I probably actually, in hindsight, should have actually added the little piece that I cut out for the waistband and attach that. But we're just gonna work around that because I forgot about that when I was drafting this pattern. Now we're taking our pencil skirt, laying it out as flat as possible. And we're going ahead and tracing along there. Now I'm gonna trace a seam allowance all the way around. Ideally, the band t-shirt that you're gonna be using to create this, you would want it a size up from what you normally wear and preferably a stretchy fabric because this is gonna allow you to actually fit the skirt portion, especially if you have full hips like I do. All right, next I'm taking this pencil skirt has one of those cool little like ruffles around the waistband. If you don't have one of these to trace as a guideline, essentially you're going to make a very large circle and you're going to then trace the width of the circle again, kind of making like a C shape with it. Perfect, there it is. Now we're gonna take uh, our fabric and our band t-shirt and all of our other supplies and we're gonna figure out which ones we're gonna use for what part. So I'm kind of scheming it out here. This is what I do a lot of times when I don't know what I'm gonna do with a band t-shirt. I see what kind of colors go good together, where I wanna place them. And I decided to use this stripe fabric for the bust because it's nice and firm, so I'm not gonna have to double layer it or anything like that. So if I decided not to wear a bra with it, it's not gonna be an issue. And it has a good amount of stretch to it. If you have a non-stretch fabric for the bust in here, it's not gonna work very well. You're gonna wind up kind of ripping it and it's gonna be uncomfortable. So stretchy is your friend. Now I'm gonna cut out an identical piece to that other one that I just cut out. The nice thing about striped fabric is it actually is really easy to match up the fabric if you're particular and you like it like that. There we go, it's gonna be something like that. Now I'm gonna cut out the waistband piece and I'm also gonna cut out the back piece that I'm gonna be using for the top portion of the dress. You can also mix and match fabrics if you kinda want uh, all sorts of different sorts of patterns throughout the piece. But for this one, I wanted the stripe for the top portion of it. Now I'm grabbing the piece that is going to be the top half of the back of the dress. Like I said before in the tutorial, in hindsight, I should have made this piece a little bit bigger. Now I'm grabbing my t-shirt, which I'm gonna use for the skirt portion. In hindsight, I have noticed that this one is a little bit bigger than the shirt that I'm gonna use, so I'm gonna forfeit a little seam allowance. Had I been using a shirt that was a large instead of a medium, this wouldn't have been an issue for me what I had on hand to do this tutorial and I wanted to get it out to you guys. Use some weighted objects to lay it down. I'm using the chalk marker to mark along my shirt. This is a really great step for if you don't want the logo on the band t-shirt to be lopsided. It's better to draw it out first and then remove your pattern and decide whether you like the way that it lays out. You can also use a ruler to measure and just double check that you have everything even. All right, now that I've cut out the front and the back, like so, now I'm gonna make some straps for this. You can skip this step if you have some ready-made elastic or sometimes at fabric stores, you can even find pre-made straps that have the, uh, the little poles on them and they're adjustable. Those are great for saving time and effort. There we go, there's my two straps. And I'm cutting out an extra piece I'm gonna make this one a little bit longer. This is gonna be for the little uh, harness strap with the O-ring that I had in the middle of the dress. Now I'm gonna take the lace fabric that I have here and I'm gonna make the ruffle using that C shape of the pattern that we drafted. You can skip this step and you can make it just straight all the way along the bottom and use the hem of the t-shirt. It's a great time saver if you want something a little bit more simple, but 
I wanted to show you guys a couple options of what you could do with this dress. You can also do a gathered ruffle at the bottom of the dress, which is essentially a large rectangle and you just gather the fabric as you sew it together and then sew it along the hemline. Now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to use it as a guideline to cut out an additional piece of the same shape. One for the front, one for the back. Now I'm just laying it out so you can kind of get an idea of what all the pieces are going to be doing on this. And I'm going to accent it with rivets and o-rings. Alright, so your first step, this might be a skip step depending upon the type of fabric you're working with. This fabric is one that is going to fray if I don't finish the edges. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select a zigzag stitch and I'm gonna just trace along all the edges with the thread. Just creating that zigzag stitch all the way around. Unfortunately, I had forgotten that I had a sewing needle for a different type of fabric on there, which is why it's really important to always change your sewing needle before you start a project. I had to fumble with the seam ripper a little bit. The more you work with your sewing machine, the more you'll learn which sewing needles go really well with certain types of fabric that you have in your arsenal. It's also very important after a certain amount of hours of sewing or after each project to change your sewing needle. A dull sewing needle will put a lot of extra wear and tear on your machine. And it also will tend to skip stitches or um, just kind of bunch all the fabric together. So just don't be cheap. Change your sewing needle. It'll save you money in the long run and it'll save you a lot of time with the seam ripper. might seem like an unnecessary step, but nothing's worse than making a beautiful sewing project and then realizing every time you wash it that it's slowly disintegrating because all the fibers in the fabric are coming unraveled. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the lacy fabric. You're gonna see me struggle a little bit because I've decided to use a different sewing needle for this one because it's a very delicate fabric. And unfortunately, I continued to find the wrong sewing needle because I didn't take my time and figure out what sewing needle would work best for this type of fabric on a scrap piece of fabric first. I'm going to zigzag the edges. Everything's going great, and up. Oh, no, it's not. Futile attempt at re-threading, and once again, it's giving me problems, so I'm gonna try a different sewing needle and see how this goes. And at long last, it's finally working. Fabrics like fishnet and lace and things like that that are really delicate will be hell on your machine and on your learning process. So just remember when you're gonna be using stuff like that, kinda buy a little extra fabric and just brace yourself. Perfect. 
now everything has been zigzag stitched. Now we're going to start working on getting the bust ready. So what I'm going to be doing is remembering which side is my uh, more the cleavage side of it. And I'm going to slowly fold over and pin down along the top seam of this. You can look at the back just to double check that the whole space is even. You want a consistent seam all the way along and it'll make your pattern look very uniform. Penelope couldn't stand being ignored. There it is, perfect. And you want to make sure that if you that you can fold them together inside out. Because nothing's worse than making two left boob pieces and then having to go back and remake another one. Alright, I got my machine all threaded with the color that I want. And I got the right needle in there, and now I'm just slowly feeding along using a straight stitch. I'm using the reinforced straight stitch, which is great for getting a, a stretch because this is gonna be on the bust, so it is gonna need a lot more give to it. If you don't have a reinforced straight stitch function on your sewing machine, I recommend using a zigzag stitch. It has less of an aesthetically pleasing sort of a look, but that's what we're doing. Then you're gonna sew the two bust pieces together. And then after that, you're gonna go ahead and sew both of the seams next to it down. look something like that. Give your dog some love and let's get back to sewing. Now we're going to take that waistband piece underneath and we're going to pin the bust portion all along there. It's going to be the one with the raw zigzagged edge that we're going to be attaching to there and leaving the part with the seam on the top. It should look something like that. You can hold it up to your bust to make sure that it looks right. Now I'm going to be pinning the back piece onto the back side of the band t-shirt. Remember to check which way the hem is going on the bottom of the shirt. That way you don't have the inside out part facing there. Perfect. There it is. And now we're also going to pin the lace onto the bottom hem of the back of the shirt. And since it has that C shape, you're actually just gonna wanna pin it in even length all the way along the bottom. And then that's gonna change the way that it drapes. I'll show you in just a moment once I get done pinning all of this stuff down. See how the ruffle drapes like that. Unfortunately, I didn't measure what was the middle portion of this in the beginning, so it was a little off on both sides. Now that I've marked that, I can go ahead and pin it all the way along, just like I was doing before making that C shape into a straight line along the seam. Okay, finally got it. We're gonna do the same thing with the front side of the shirt. This time I was smart and I actually used a ruler to mark where the middle was. All right, now we're gonna start sewing all those pieces that we pinned down together. So I'm sewing the bust piece to the waistband piece. I'm just using that reinforced straight stitch, sewing with control, following the guidelines that I've set with the pins. Just sewing another reinforced straight stitch along there just to keep that seam down. Changing out my sewing needle so that my machine works perfectly. And unfortunately, I had kind of a funky seam here because I didn't change my sewing needle and I'd been using that one on another project. 
just painstakingly working with the Sea Ripper. I left this in so you could understand that even though I've been sewing for a very long time, I still have my struggles. Now I'm getting a nice clean seam in there. will be your best friend and your worst enemy. And I finally got it. Now we're attaching the back stripe piece to the back of the band t-shirt. That was nice and easy. And now I'm just gonna sew another seam along the back just to secure it in place. Once again, using the reinforced straight stitch. Now I'm going to attach the bust piece and the waistband to the band t-shirt. So essentially you kind of want to fold it over where it almost kind of looks inside out, which you can see that I'm doing. And I would use a ruler to measure where the middle of the bust is going to meet the middle of your band t-shirt. That way you don't have everything all askew. Now I'm also going to pin down the pieces that I made for the straps. If you bought elastic instead, you can totally skip this step. But I'm basically just folding over the fabric as evenly as I can to make a straight line. And I'm going to repeat that on both sides. This one is going to be the one that I'm going to use for the O-ring piece. So I'm not adding any elastic to reinforce it and make it uh, sturdier because it's strictly for decorative purposes. Now these ones I'm using for the straps, I'm gonna reinforce it with some elastic just to make it more durable and give it more weight. And it's also really nice because it kind of gives you a guideline for pinning it down. I've cut the piece a little bit wider than this elastic is, so I have plenty of room to just pin it over it. The elastic is also very thick and difficult to sew through, so you're going to want to remember to use an appropriate sewing needle when you decide to sew this piece down. That way we don't have to fumble with the seam. Alright, and I'm just repeating the process with the second strap that I've made. You could do it as one long continuous one and double the length if you don't feel like sewing it as two pieces, but I usually just like to do two pieces. And in hindsight, because I had made that back piece not quite long enough to meet up how I wanted it with the front portion of the dress, I'm actually sliding the bust part and waistband part a little bit further back just so it sews together a little bit more evenly. I'm gonna use my reinforced straight stitch to sew this down while my kitty tries her best to do cat things and interrupt me. project that required a lot of time with the sea river. So just bear with me. All right, now that I got that going, I'm ready to start sewing it. Yep, I am. There we go. Finally got things rolling, going through with the straight stitch. Boom, and that's how it should look. And now I'm just going to Secure that stitch down with another reinforced straight stitch. All right, next.
Next, I'm going to start sewing down the straps. Got the appropriate sewing needle in there that's good for this heavy duty fabric. And I'm just using the straight stitch and guiding it through. repeating this process for the second strap as well as the o-ring piece for the middle. Because the piece that I'm the strap that I'm using for the o-ring in the middle does not have that heavy elastic in between. I've switched my sewing needle to a stretch stitch needle because I don't need something that heavy for the middle. If you use a needle that's too heavy for a lighter fabric, you'll wind up with holes in it and it'll slowly start to tear as you wear it. All right, get my cat out of the way so I can start sewing. And I'm still on that stretch needle, which is gonna be perfect for th sewing through this t-shirt fabric. using the reinforced straight stitch all the way through. I'm also gonna do a second seam all the way along there just so everything looks nice and uniform and even and is nice and secure. You can also buy a twin needle if your sewing machine has uh, the option to use two spools of thread. I'm repeating the same for the other piece of the t-shirt. All right, the next step that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach the strap that is gonna have the O-ring in the middle. Now you might think that you wanna just have it the even length all the way around, but you wanna have a little excess fabric to play with. So I'm gonna pin it at the very end on either side. Now because I goofed and I didn't properly measure everything, I have a little bit of space in between where the two, place, the two tops of the shirt should line up. Since I have this awkward bit. I'm using some black lace just to kind of fill that void. And this wide black elastic lace is perfect for that. You don't want to use a non-stretch lace for something like this because it's not going to have a lot of give. It's going to make the garment very difficult to put on and take off. It might rip and you also might get that awkward like kind of like back fat thing going on with the back of the dress. getting my proper needle in because I've learned my lesson after fumbling with the seam ripper enough times today. I'm sewing down the straps that I made for the center of the shirt. Now I'm sewing down the elastic lace to the back of this. I'm just using that reinforced straight stitch again. I don't need to use a zigzag stitch because the ends of this are finished. Unlike the lace that I used for the bottom of the dress. And for this, I'm actually following that kind of scalloped edge along the bottom of it. I could have done a straight stitch, but it might kind of roll up and pill and stuff like that down the line. So I'm doing this so it has a nice uniform look. It's kind of a pain in the butt if uh, you haven't done a lot of sewing and you're trying to guide it through in all different directions, but good practice. Now we have these two pieces all ready to go. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay them down as flat as possible, smooth out all the edges, We're gonna flip one over and we're gonna lay them together inside out. Try to have
have everything as smooth as possible and as even as possible when you're pinning it together. Much better to take your time while doing this than to have to bust out the seam ripper again and fix something where there's fabric all bunched up together or it's sewn together all uneven. when you pin the lace together, don't go in a straight line down. Let it pin along the edges where it flares out. That'll help keep that nice little ruffle that we have going on at the bottom of it. And if you have skipped the step to adding the ruffle on the bottom, I would advise pinning the bottom of the dress first so the hemline matches up because it's much easier to fix the top hemline if it's uneven, which I'm gonna show you later on in this tutorial. I'm using the ruler to just kind of make sure that my lines are nice and even and straight. If you buy a pattern maker's curved ruler, that is really helpful for sewing dresses and things like that. I'm using my proper sewing needle for this particular part. I'm gonna start with the lace. So I have one that's gonna work well with this delicate fabric in my machine right now. I'm just doing the reinforced straight stitch. Now that I've reached the end there, I'm backing up my stitch. And actually this one works well for the t-shirt fabric as well, so I'm continuing my way up. But once I get to the bust portion, I need a needle that is going to work for a heavier duty or fabric. So once I get right about here, I'm gonna back up my stitch, change out my needle, and then get back to using that reinforced straight stitch to sew everything together. And now I'm starting with the other side. Going back to that needle that works really well for the delicate fabrics. And I'm using that reinforced straight stitch and just guiding the fabric through there. thick fabric that I have for the bust. So I've changed my needle. I'm actually changing the direction for the sewing pins in this because it's much easier to feed it through the machine when you don't have the fabric bunching up uh, towards the what would be my right side of the machine. I'm slipping it over my mannequin, but if you don't have a mannequin, obviously you would just want to try this on for this step. And I'm gonna figure out where exactly I want the middle strap to be. I'm also noticing that I could take this in a little bit at the sides. My mannequin is about, roughly about the same bust size as me. I just have more hips than her, so I've learned to gauge my pattern making based on that. So I'm taking it in a little bit at the sides. It's much easier to leave excess fabric and take it in a little bit more at the end than it is to try to create more space in, in a dress that you have already taken in too much. Now I'm gonna start zigzagging all the edges that I did not already zigzag. We already got the uh, lace on the bottom, so I don't need to do that part, but I'm doing it on both sides of the t-shirt and along the bust area. This is once again gonna keep your fabric from fraying at the end, and it's gonna give it some extra security. Trimming off a bunch of the excess fabric but I am leaving some excess fabric right at the very top of the bust. I'll get to this point in a little bit. It's basically, if 
everything doesn't fit together perfectly evenly, see like that, you can go ahead and pin that down and it totally hides the fact that your seam isn't even. So at the very top, just make sure to leave a little extra. And I'm just gonna sew it down with a reinforced straight stitch. Now we're gonna add the straps to the dress. So I'm measuring to keep an even distance so my straps aren't uneven. It's much better to sew the straps to the back of the dress first than it is to sew it to the front. Especially if you don't have a mannequin, because if you don't have a mannequin and you don't sew it to the back first and you're trying to pin an even length and get everything right, it's really hard to reach your hands behind your back and, and get an even length, so. So always pin the straps to the back of the garment first. I'm using measuring tape to make sure that everything is even distance from the side seam. And I'm also gonna use that to measure that my strap length is even on both sides. Now I'm taking the middle strap. I'm measuring where it is in the middle and I'm just snipping it. Now I'm finding an O-ring in my little box of metal goodies. And I'm just gonna fold over the piece and try to get it as evenly as possible. I'm gonna use my tape measure to make sure that it's even in both places. Because I know that my waist has a, you know, probably about a half inch to a full inch more than my mannequin, I'm leaving it a little bit looser. But if you were pinning it on yourself, you would wanna pin it exactly where it fits you perfectly all of my measurements and everything's good to go. Except that part. That part's not good to go. Now it is. Just kidding. No, it's not. switch to a heavier duty sewing needle because I'm sewing through a lot of thick fabric to get these straps on. For the straps, I do at least two straight stitch seams. Just to make sure that they're really on there securely. secured on, I'm going to move on to the front of the shirt. Now I'm gonna sew down the O-ring. Just make sure that you're only sewing through the strap part of this and that you're not sewing through the entire dress. So see how I've separated it from the dress to make sure that I don't do that. And I'm cutting off the excess fabric that I have behind it. Perfect, there we are. All right, and now I decided that I want to add a little extra strap for security, just to kind of pick up that little O piece. The weight from the metal O-ring sometimes will drag it down to an unideal spot. And I quickly tried it on my mannequin and I decided that I didn't want it quite like all the way up the bust and I pinned it in place. I'm just gonna sew that down using a reinforced straight stitch. Got the 
first stitch down. Now I'm just gonna loop it through the little O-ring and pin it down, just like so. Cutting off the excess fabric. And now I'm gonna sew this down. And once again, making sure that you're not sewing through both sides of the dress. It's really important when you're sewing little details like this that you're making sure what is underneath your needle before you start hitting the sewing pedal. I've definitely gotten to the very end of the project, went to go and sew on one little detail in the middle of the dress and sewed the whole thing together and had to bust out the seam ripper. Just kind of finishing up some of the little edges here just to make them a little bit more polished. Now that all the sewing is done, now we're ready for the final step. This is optional, but I think that this really gives everything a cool finish. I'm gonna add some of these little dome rivets to the strap in the middle. You can also add it to the straps on the top of the dress, or I've even done some where I put little rivets around the band logo and it looks really cool. I'm using the watercolor pencil to measure and mark where I want each one. This is a good way to keep it even. If you want, you can freehand it, but I've kind of had mixed results with that. So for the purposes of this tutorial, I would highly recommend measuring and marking. I'm using my sewing awl to poke holes in all the places that I placed a dot on making sure not to go through the rest of the dress and put holes in anything. I'm going slow and with control. Now that I've got that, I'm taking the nipple side, which is called the post, and I'm gonna be feeding it through the back of the piece. And then I'm gonna place the cap over the top and I'm gonna press it down until I hear it snap. I'm gonna repeat that process all the way along. Now the snap might give you the false impression that the rivet is set in place and it's not gonna come off, but it is not secure. You're gonna have to hammer it down with the mallet setting tool and the anvil to finish the process. Now that I've fed all these through, I'm ready to set everything. I have my setting tool. Make sure that you use the proper sized one for whatever size rivets you're using. The concave side is gonna go over the cap and then you're gonna strike the mallet with the other side. This little anvil piece over here is gonna go underneath. So you want it directly underneath whichever rivet you're gonna set. I'm placing the concave side of the tool on top of the cap and striking it with the mallet. Remember, concave side over the cap, strike it with the mallet, place the anvil underneath. And each time that you go to set a new rivet, make sure to scoot over the anvil underneath. just realized that since this is a strap in the middle and not directly under the dress, that I can actually just put the anvil directly under the strap. It gives you a much better visual of how that works. All right, I hope that you enjoyed working on this sewing project with me, and I hope that yours came out fantastic. If you enjoyed the video and you enjoyed making this project with me, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If there are projects that you want to see me do in the future, like stuff that you see on my mannequins in my backgrounds, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks again.